your lover That's the way it's going to stay I'm giving nothing up I'll give nothing away Our love is growing stronger Day by day Won't you listen with your heart When you hear me say There's nothing like a first love Thanks for staying with us. I have Mr. Dathan Jones and Sundry. That was great, you guys. We really enjoyed those musical numbers, and especially that first love. I like that, but we'll deal with first love in just a moment. Uh, what, and this is, anybody can, can take this one and run with it. What made you focus in on music as something you like to do? I come from a musical family. My father is a gospel singer. Uh, he's the lead singer of a group called the Dixie Hummingbirds. All right. They've been together in name for the past 66 years. 66? They celebrated their anniversary here in Los Angeles, July 10th. Okay. Uh, this year. And um, it's a lot of entertainers. I come from a long line of entertainers in my oh, family. Oh, we can tell because you can sing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. And uh, I, for me, it's just uh, growing up in church choirs and just kind of, you know, uh, music is what got me through high school and kind of kept me on the right track and stuff. And it's kind of more like a feeling deep down inside, you know, mm -hmm. more than anything. Now, did, doesn't uh, the Dixie Hummingbirds do a song called Save a Seat for Me? 
They if probably you get there did. before I do, just well anyway, because I got yeah. an album that they did. With, yeah, I'm, I'm my, sure because there's been Save so the many that they've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, who? Okay. Now you mentioned that your dad was a member of the Dixie Hummingbirds. Who were your musical influences? Because we all have someone that fashions mm -hmm. what we like, uh, you know, that which we want to be a part of. So who were your musical influences? Well, I grew up uh, during that Motown era, and it's just, oh, you yeah. know, looking at uh, the Temptations and the Miracles. To me, Smokey Robinson was just it for me. Nobody could sing like Smokey. And, uh, and Stevie, of course. Stevie, to me, is just, you know, the influence of all. And, uh, but for me personally, it was really uh, meeting Sundre and, and becoming friends with her and where I was able to see that I could make it mine and actually, you know, get a hold of it as opposed to watching something on TV and kind of dreaming about it, you know. Okay. Sundre? My first influence was my father. Okay. Um, naturally, he, he would sing around the house and my sister and I, Linda, um, we would sit, he, he would be in the bathroom shaving, we'd sit outside the bathroom door and listen to him sing, and when he would finish a song, we'd applaud. Oh, okay. You know, but um, Aretha Franklin, Better yes, the, oh yeah, Italian. Aretha Franklin, <laughs> Gladys Knight. Um, and you remind me so much of Patti LaBelle, because you know, Patti's my girl, I well. mean, and everybody that knows me knows I love Patty LaBelle, and when you was hitting those high notes on First Love, I'm saying, do it, do it. Well, when I, I'm from Philadelphia, and I used to sing with a group called the Ordettes, and yeah. in the group, there was, a, um, it was Jean Brown, Yvonne, Patricia Holt, and myself. Patricia Holt is Patty LaBelle. Gone <laughs> All right, Patricia Holt is Patty, and see, she got on all these jewels. <laughs> oh boy! So, so that's Patty's real name, Patricia Holt. It was before she, she married. changed yeah. it. And, and, and yeah, she, that was her name, Patricia Holt. Okay, that's right. all right. And you were the lead singer. No, I was not the lead singer. We we all did leads in okay. the group, but we were the Ordettes. The Ordettes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, we were managed see, by I've learned Bernard Montague. <laughs> history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. History. Yeah. Um, your dad is in gospel. Obviously, you've had some gospel influences. You were talking about singing in church choirs, and Stevie Wonder as an influence, Aretha as an influence. What direction do you see the music industry heading in? Well, I think uh, it's getting back to the real singing, you know, for, for a while. You know how the pendulum swings and at one moment it's kind of one thing is in and another moment something else is happening. And to me, I think we're going back to the real singers. And that's, that's really where we're trying to head. And that's what our thing is about with this music that we're doing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's going back. It's almost come full circle now. Mm -hmm. And it's getting back to the real singers, the real groups, you yeah. know. Oh, and we need that. And, you know, and, and I can appreciate that because I used to, I was a disc jockey when I was in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I okay. was on the radio for about five years. And I used to love to get into the studio and sit at the turn. You know, they're mm -hmm. automated now, mm -hmm. but I used to sit at the turntables, have to queue it up okay. and, you know, okay. stack up my records and, and do the thing. And I used to love playing things like by the old Jays, uh, Stairway yep. to Heaven. Yep. Yeah. New birth. Uh, say hello to Lester. Oh, yeah. Lester, hello. My homeboy, lead singer, New Birth. Okay. And, and the different things like that. And then, you know, we had that influx where we had rap seeming as if it was going to just mm -hmm. dominate mm -hmm. the whole musical spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, slowly start to evolve where they put rappers and ballad singers together. Yes. Yeah. Now the rappers are fading out. Yes. And the ballad singers are stepping mm -hmm. to the forefront. Mm -hmm. You have groups yeah. like mm -hmm. Shy, uh, H Town Boys, My Favorite Silk, mm -hmm. uh, Boys to Me. Right. And, and like you say, and it's coming back. And all we see is the stylistics being reborn, yeah. right. the shy yeah. lights the being same, reborn. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, what's the girl named Toni Braxton? She's, yeah. uh, you know, so all of this thing, like you said, it's coming back. And I really appreciate it because it makes me feel good that I can turn on the radio 
and don't have to yeah. worry about turning it down because I hear something I don't like yeah. and I can ride the rest yeah. of the day right. and listen to something that's enjoyable. Yeah. And I don't think it's to really take anything away from anybody because no, there's room for, for all of it right. out there, you know. And, and I mean, there are a lot of things, we have a lot of plans for things that we want to do. And some of it may be, you know, some of those kind of collaborations with some things. I mean, if I got a chance, I'd love to work with Heavy D. I love his stuff. Oh, I do too. You know, so there are a lot of people out there. I like yeah. him too. Yeah. Yeah. But now what we can do is we can probably do a thing like Boys to Men. Now, mm -hmm. you know how, like, three of them I know can sing. Mm -hmm. The one that wear the glasses, the mm -hmm. one that does all of that ad living, mm -hmm. and then the skinny brother. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that got the bass voice, usually when you listen to their records, all he do is talk. Mm -hmm. So y'all can do the same, and I'll do the talking. <laughs> That'll, Just work. Little... That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> they get in the way with it. We can get we away with it. Uh, <laughs> do you believe, then, that there is messages in music, or is music solely for entertainment purposes only? I think that all depends on the individual. What about your music? My music, yes, definite messages. When I write songs, I try to write songs that have positive messages, you know, because mm -hmm. you learn from songs. You do. It, even in school, you know, you learn this, I'm a little teapot, you, you know. You, you do. There's a message in all music. That's true. Uh -huh. You know, but what you want to do is keep the message positive. Uh -huh. You know, you don't want n uh, negative messages. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I, I think there are messages in music. Yeah, really definitely. Do. And, and yes. for me, when I write, it's usually from some sort of experience, you know. And sometimes just, uh, just writing and, and being able to yeah. just perform what you've written is kind of therapeutic in a way. I mean, you know, you're able to get things out, you're able to express things that maybe you couldn't say directly or, you know, you just didn't, couldn't find a way to get it out. Sometimes you can express it through the music and, yeah. you know. Right, I mean, I guess you're right when you say it depends on some artist. Like, for example, Tupac Secure, he did this song, Keep Your Head Up, and had all of these positive things to say about how you ought to treat women. But then he has an, a life that's not in keeping with the mm -hmm. song he sung. Mm -hmm. Then many years ago, mm -hmm. Teddy Pendergrass did a song that says, Somebody told me to deliver this message uh -huh. prior to the tragedy in his life with mm -hmm. the car accident. And I, and I try to reflect on songs like that with messages and then mm -hmm. look at the people and, and what they portray. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, like you say, the, there is therapy. And I listen to a lot of music, especially if an artist away from the stage, has a kind of life that's positive, mm -hmm. then when I look at mm -hmm. his music, mm -hmm. I look for something similar to that lifestyle that he has right. Right. To, get, get, to get something for myself. Exactly. And I'm sure, sure, and then being entertainers yourself, I'm sure you try to say, I got to say something in this piece mm -hmm. that can reach out and really touch and make a difference with somebody else. Mm -hmm. If you had a chance to work with anybody musically, and it would go gold or double platinum or whatever they call it these days, who would it be? My father. All right. <laughs> well, for me, I guess it would be Patti LaBelle, because like you, I love her also. All right. Uh, and I'm getting a cue from the floor. I'm going to throw one more at you. Mm -hmm. Are you, in your singing, do you find that you are romantic or are you hard to move? Does, does Luther do anything for you or, or does it take Ice Cube? I love Luther. I do. Yeah. I do. It's two votes and, for And um, yeah, as yeah. far as my singing, um, I, I've got a lot of moods in my singing. Sometimes I'm aggressive. Sometimes I'm laid back. Okay. You know, just however it's however the song fits me. Mm -hmm. How did First Love come about? Real quick, we got about 15 seconds. First wow. Love. First Love. Well, actually, First Love was uh, a, a poem that someone tried to write to me. Oh. And it was uh, just the song kind of grew out of that. Out of that. Out of well, that. when I think about first love, a girl I used to go with back in Pontiac, Michigan, Judy Norris, was my mm -hmm. first love. Mm -hmm. So when you were singing that, mm -hmm. I thought about her. Margaret, welcome back to work. Billy's Place, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after. <laughs>